Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit Special number 166, recorded September 1st, 2013. Printer Bot. So hello everybody, we're doing a little Twit Special before we uh, do the Twit Show this afternoon. Brooke Drum is here. He's from Printer Bot, P-R-I-N-T-R-B-O-T dot com. It was a, you might remember, it was a Kickstarter project to build a 3D, inexpensive 3D printer for education. And Brooke's got a company doing it. This is a printer bot plus is the high end. Yeah. Hi, Brooke. Right. Welcome. Thanks. Came down from the Sacramento area to drop this off. That's right. Is this, this for is us? Yours. This is yours, man. Hey, we got a 3D printer. Nice. Nice. Ooh. Score. I don't know what we're going to do with it, but we got it. <laughs> Print things. Exactly. Well, look at all the things that uh, now uh, 3D printing is suddenly you know, huge in the news, uh, right. uh, partly because of Bree Pettis and his maker bots. Sure. Um, uh, which just got acquired for almost half a billion dollars by the big commercial 3D printing mm -hmm. company. What, what is happening with 3D printing as a hobby? Yeah, I think the, the technology right now is really hobbyist. Uh, it's interesting. Ars Technica just did an article on one of our cheapest models, $299. Um, for the Wait a minute, $299? Not for this. For the PrinterBot Simple. It's a, and that's a kit. It's a kit, but you can get it for $399 as assembled. Okay. So it's really the cheapest 3D printer on the market in the world right now. And they put it up against a MakerBot Replicator 2. And uh, it's actually a really good article. It's funny because you know how John C. always is the curmudgeon of uh, right. you know everything. Right. Uh, this guy, Lee, uh, kind of took that tact. And, but I, but I appreciated it because it was like, you know what? All 3D printing is actually hard right now. It feels like the early days of PCs, it, frankly. It really is, yeah. There's a guy that works for me, Carl Ubus. The hot end, uh, that little red sleeve is covering the hot end. The technology that melts the plastic, it's thermoplastic. Um, he actually worked in, uh, at HP in Silicon Valley back in the 70s, and he always tells me, Brooke, this is just like the PC days. Yeah. He, yeah. he had the same boss as Waz and New Waz, yeah. went to the computer club. It whole, feels like that. Nine yards. So uh, these all work kind of the same. They're melting uh, either plastic or a resin. Yeah. And they're doing it in an XYZ controller that allows the head to move around, right? Yeah, yeah. So there's uh, there's. Both. Is it XYZ or just XY? Well, the, the, the FDM, which is fused deposition modeling, right? So it's, it's thermoplastic. Um, it's XYZ. When that means go, it can move up as well as left yeah, to right. Yeah, yeah, you'll see that move up as it goes, and, right. and the bed's moving on the XY. Right. Um, but uh, the resin printers are literally only Z. They're uh, building up. So yeah, the so base the base moves around and the and the head stays in the same place. For the resin print, I have a Form Labs. Uh, yeah. They were also a Kickstarter, and they do resin based. And so that this that's is a, a body a, scan of me. That's you in a resin form. Can yeah, you get the over the a, shoulder there, Jason? We just so we did a this. body scan of me and a bunch of other people. And, oh, hold on one second. Uh, this is uh, just coming up, and lasers are basically um, through uh, light are exposing this resin and, and curing it. And then it just this is moves, a very different way of doing. Moves it. straight up. Yeah, we're yeah. doing a resin-based printer too. We just haven't finished it yet. Um, so this is resin. Yeah, that's right. Um, but right now we're FDM. All the plastic stuff here. These are this is PLA plastic that, that this comes is on a PLA, spool. PLA, PLA. Yeah. Yeah. Most of this so stuff you is PLA. you built these uh, last night. <laughs> this one was done on your printer, your printer, your printer, your printer. Okay. What is my printer? The printer but so plus. This is the plus. That's All about what, a thousand bucks? Thousand bucks. We okay. have a eight hundred dollar printer that's assembled called the Junior. You can fold it up and put in your backpack. You're trying to uh, you position these for education, mostly. Yeah, I mean, really, it's so it's early days, and so education is part of the uh, certainly hobbyists. I mean, yeah, totally. But, but early we were doctors, talking with hobbyists. Alex Lindsay was here earlier, and he said, you know, mm -hmm. we, they they're using they have a they have a replicator from uh, MakerBot. He said we we needed to uh, make a, a teleprompter, so we. We just made our own. Yeah, exactly. So there are some people using this for real 
Oh, you sure. said you have a toilet uh, handle that's made, yeah, out, that's made right. on, on a printer bot? <laughs> Ever since I started the company, I've always been waiting for uh, you know reasons to use it. And I use SketchUp, and Alex said he uses SketchUp. That's and the software tool you're using for this. Yeah, Google did uh, SketchUp to do all the buildings in Google Maps. Right. And it's totally free. Um, there's a pro Not SketchUp Pro, using the yeah, free, the free SketchUp. One. And there's a little plug wow. that you can get that exports STL. And so STL is the... Is the file format for all this stuff, and it's He's, basically just the skin of a model. It's nothing on the inside. When you go to print, you have to tell it, um, "I want it this density." Mm -hmm. So the infill is like 0.25. Like this is 0.25. It could be solid, but I chose to just put a like honeycomb mesh in in the, in the middle because you don't see the middle. So right. it's just the skin. It's easy right. to use. This is an interesting uh, piece. This is metal, but it was PLA. The outside was printed in PLA and then they poured they can't use it as a cast. Right. Yeah, this uh, professor down in New Mexico, um, he it's does an art neat class. Yeah. yeah. We're giving him a printer and uh, he sent me that in trade. He sent me a couple pieces, but uh, you know like rings and um, uh, jewelry and stuff, uh, the the really high resolution um, You people... could make a ring with this? Oh, sure. So you're driving the printer now from your laptop. Yeah. Now you're using, there's some special software that you're using for this that? This is all open source. I'm a completely open source company. You can go online and get the plans for this and all my printers. Um, totally open source. The, the electronics are open source. The software is all open source. So when you think about differentiators between MakerBot and me, I'm a completely open source company. And Bree has, over time, closed it down, and he's closed source. Um, so there is some pain that goes along with open source, but we're really embracing hackerspaces education right now. Do you support Shapeways and, and some of these other uh, databases of sites? So I've met these guys, the great guys, and obviously they have great prints. They can print in metal, in all right. kinds of, but it, you know, million dollar printers, uh, million I and a half dollar So printers. you send them a design and they make it. So yeah, anybody can design. You can even right. de design in SketchUp and, and send something away to be wow. printed in a really high high resolution with you know titanium. Right. Um, mine are <laughs> ABS, PLA, polycarbonate. Um, there's even flexible PLA. How expensive are the materials? We're using a big reel right. of PLA plastic. It just comes in a uh, kilogram, a one kilogram, string. two point two pounds. Uh huh. And that's thirty bucks. Oh, that's not bad. On my site, MakerBot sells it for sixty. Okay. Um, so so we're, you're kind of the you're kind of the the, uh, the value the Volkswagen yeah. of, of 3D printers. Well, it's funny because I know what it costs. You know, it's right. like it's literally like six, seven bucks a pound to get this stuff made. We make it in the U.S. There's lots of China. You, you have to make it yourself. You don't just buy this. Well, stuff. we have an extruder that Do uh, you? makes this for wow. us in um, San Diego. Wow. But uh, MakerBot sells it for you know a higher profit margin, and that's really where I started. I first was interested in this. I've been watching Popular Science and Jay Leno doing stuff for his cars and whatnot. And I've been watching this for a while, but finally when I saw on a, have you heard of Make Magazine? Yes, of yeah. course. Yeah. Dale Darty, Make Magazine. Yeah. I saw Brie on the cover and it was kind of, wow, um, I want to get one of these. So yep. it was 1200 bucks, saved up for months. And when I put it together with my kids, I've got three kids and my youngest learned to solder on a 3D printer. I thought you can't, you, you can't require soldering. You, you can't have 1200 parts. It's got to be easier. So right. as I lived with it for a while, I thought, man, I can, I can do better. And so I designed a simpler one and then we did a Kickstarter. One of the things that made this explode was the patents on 3D printing, the right. FDM patents had expired. Mm -hmm. So this stuff is, and this is the whole, this is the beauty of a patent system when it works well. They were able to invent this stuff, patent right. it, make money on it for 20 years. 30 but, years. 30 years, but now everybody has access yeah. to it. It's been and a little this can explode. Years. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So It's very exciting. The, uh, a guy in uh, England, a professor, uh, open sourced the first um, RepRap, and that stands for Replicating Rapid Prototyper. And uh, basically the original idea was um, for him, he's like, he studies game theory and everything. He, he released these plans that you can actually print. So these printers can print rep you know, replicas of themselves. So the Kickstarter that I did was a $500 <laughs> printer that can print itself. So we had 30 printer bots printing 14 or 1140 <laughs> printer bots.
Wow, yeah. what a good idea. Now, so, you're not still doing that. No. These no. don't look printed. These look no, like they're well, made. I, well, I did the Kickstarter, and I thought $25,000. I had to talk my wife into it. She said, do the Kickstarter. Don't sell the cars or mortgage the house. <laughs> um, so we did the Kickstarter. I was embarrassed at first, um, thinking that $25,000 was a lot to ask. But in, in one... In terms of Kickstarters, it's not, actually. No. But, uh, like, my first one was the Glyph, and they went to 300 and I thought, oh, my gosh, that would be amazing. In 24 hours, or 48 hours, we funded uh, oh, 25000 and then we went to 830000 in You're kidding. Wow. <laughs> so, How big was yours, Jason? Oh, well, <laughs> mine, mine was music, first of all, and it was only ten <laughs> in comparison. You which, got 800000 on your on your 830000 Holy cow. Crazy. And, uh, yeah, that kind of plunged me into this, this whole world of, uh, okay, now what are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No we got joy. some money. Yeah. So we, uh, I went full time. I literally started in my garage. Now is it done? It's just stopped. Yeah. This is a calibration cube. So when you first get a printer up and running, you want to make sure that the dimensions are right. Right. So, um, you can measure the, the width and length and height and know that your printer's calibrated. So wow. it's a simple cube. Wow. So this was uh, back in uh, 2011 uh, That's that right. you did this. It's all it's coming up on two years uh, in December. Um, yeah, talk about a roller coaster. No kidding. Yeah. And and did you do you feel like you did what you had hoped to do? It yeah. says finally a 3D printer kit anyone can build. Yep. Check. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we did. One thing about Kickstarter, it's crazy because um, you know you you never think you're going to go that big. And at the time yeah, we were in big. like the number two uh, highest. Uh, you know, we, we, we got the highest in technology. Wow. Other than one other uh, person. You know, I got the Pebble on. They were another one during oh, that there time. There you go. Yeah. Uh, and it's funny because it kind of just pushes you into the limelight, and you have to find out uh, with School of Hard Knocks, yeah. are you... What do you are do you, next? Yeah. Are, are you qualified to run a right. company at, at that scale? I guess you are, Brooke. <laughs> You're still here. So you printed the, uh, the brownie. We know yeah. it's calibrated, or do we yeah. have to do anything to fix it? No, uh, what I do now is I would just... John has the calipers. Do you want to... I did this last night. So measure it with the caliper. We can, we can just pull this off. All right. So it's supposed to be 20. Oh, yeah, these are the cheap ones. No offense. Uh, uh, you got you to get fouler. Uh, so it's supposed to be 20 millimeters. It's, it's 20.57 20. 20. by 20.73. So it's so, so about a half millimeter off. Is that yeah. too much? Or? Uh, I, you can totally dial it in to be perfect. You and can. It's, it's a... It's a little low on... It's supposed to be 10 millimeters. Here, hold it a little bit lower. Oh, sorry. There. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so... Uh, it's supposed to be 10 millimeters. 20.66. Make sure it's... There we go. 20.68 by 20.62. Yeah. Are, on a Fowler, it'd probably be more. I'm serious. I use these because they were free <laughs> for a long time. I have a couple pairs of these. They just break. Hey, we don't really have any use for calipers, so and, I'm glad we even have some. And then right. we got... Uh, <laughs> We have calipered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, we need uh, calipers. This is supposed apparently. to be 10, and this is um, 8 points. So, but you could, the tolerances are tight enough that you could get it down to almost perfect. Oh, yeah, so in the program here, in the open source program, you can totally dial it in. Where what program perfect. are you using? Uh, currently, embarrassed to say, I use the old school Pronterface. We now recommend Repetier. Okay. Um, the open source, I mean, man, one, one thing I learned when I got into this was uh, open source is like herding cats. <laughs> uh, no one is focused at all. No, of course and not. And the interfaces are terrible, as you can see here. So we recommend Repetier and the Getting Started Guide that I recommend that's on our website. Um, it, it recommends Repetier. Okay. So it's a little more uh, nice to look at and a little more powerful. But I'm old school because I started, you know, two years ago. But anyway, you can you can put <laughs> isn't a, that funny? You can put a old G code. School, two years. You can put a G code in there and calibrate. So you just you, you really have to just tell the motors how many steps per millimeter are there okay. and and it goes out to like four decimals so okay. you can you can totally dial it in cool so what are you gonna you want to print something or uh, i mean we it takes a it takes a while we should say yeah. you know uh, th this is not something you do in in seconds or minutes it's not the replicator from star tr uh, trek yet but uh right so these these twit uh, bugs that you yeah last so night. these these are and one one of the things that i really feel passionate about um is, since i'm into education is educating folks about this and a couple things about 3d printers today they're all hard to use. I because mean, you have to use the software for one thing? I mean, you have to understand how the machine works. Right. I mean, whether it's a $300 printer bot or a, a $2,800 replicator 2X, um, it, they will break. And oh. so you got to clean the head. Oh. 
you you do have to be it's a break it's funny because the technology right now is uh coming in a time where it's brand new when we also have ipads that are right. like you know three-year-olds yeah can use. yeah we're going back to the 80s uh, totally yeah. so yeah. people aren't really prepared for that kind of you know mm -hmm. learning involved but i mm -hmm. i just want to be honest and say that you know to to dial yours in last night i took a couple hours I took it off the shelf. I calibrated. I printed some stuff. I failed at some things. Yeah. And then I calibrated and then came up with this. And how long did it take to print this nice little 3D uh, vase? That was probably 20, 30 minutes. Oh, that's not too bad. Nah. This was probably 10. Okay. But you, this was uh, pre-calibration, these things right here. So you can kind of see, uh, you know, so there's the, a little bit of banding. It gets a little smoother when you calibrate it. Yeah, this is a little smoother. Yeah. Yeah, that's so, really cool. I mean, it's it's really so early. I, I'm just fascinated by this. Really early days. I so how do we? So we now have this. Are we gonna? Uh, how? Who? Okay. Who wants to? Burke, is this your baby? You want to take this? Is uh, take this on? John, who wants to be responsible? I think Burke is. Uh, Burke. Is Wick. Okay. <laughs> so Burke. So uh, is there training involved that we need to teach him how to clean and? Fix? I mean, literally. I you know. I think Burke will look at this and just get it. He's just yeah. good at that stuff. Uh, you, you have to be able to operate some software. Um, you can download models off of Thingiverse. So there's like 30, So this does 000, support Thingiverse? Oh, totally. Okay. 30,000 models in Thingiverse. I have an iPhone app that you can you can look at stuff and download your Dropbox. Oh, neat. Um, that's called Makers, M-A-K-R-Z. M-A-K-R-Z. Um, it's the base of what we hope will be a competitor to Thingiverse eventually. Thingiverse um, is a database of 3D Thingiverse models. Thingiverse is owned by MakerBot. Right. And it's uh, STL files. And you see a bunch of SketchUp and uh, some OBJ, just different file formats. But STL is a old, old printing it's, format. And, and this so, uses STL. So. Yeah, these, these are all, this is Thingiverse, right. Thingiverse. This I created last night for you. Um, I don't even know, do you have a 3D model? Of the Twit logo? We have several different yeah. interesting. Yeah. They look like they're know. made out of granulated sugar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know what that oh. is. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's old, like, like Stratus or something. Or, yeah. 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 And the, the, so these are made by probably people who work in the business. There's another There's another type of printer where it like spreads powder out across yeah. in a very thin layer and then a laser kind of molds it together uh, with the heat and then it spreads out another layer. So this, that is, uh, you end up with like a whole cube of powder. You reach down in and you pull out what's been fused together. <laughs> wow. And that is so fragile. That's probably what this was, yeah. right? And that is so yeah. fragile. They have to dip it in like super glue. It's it's very fragile. And you can see there's chips. Yeah. And I've talked to guys we've, that have. We've broken it. We've glued it together a couple yeah. of times. I've talked to guys that have companies that oh, make yeah. these Shapeways. things. Shapeways. Yeah, Shapeways. There you go. Yeah. This is nice because, like, you could literally... We have skateboards that you can ride that we've printed. Well, so that's the ah. other question. It, this obviously. is obviously that you used do that. for prototyping in business uh, yeah. parts and so forth. Um, those are probably much more expensive, fancier oh, machines. Oh, totally, yeah. yeah. I mean, literally, to get into a pro... like, And, and this is what they call pro, and, and what they kind of... Uh, but this is fragile. I know. It's fragile, but it's pretty smooth. Yeah. And you can do this crazy, because it's supported by the powder around it, you can do any kind of crazy model. Well, the other thing I like is this is in multicolors. When are we yeah. going to get multicolor 3D printing? You know, it's coming. There's there's a huge, huge just onslaught of newcomers. It seems to like 3D this is printing. exploding. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A couple years ago when I went to Maker Faire, they said the previous year there were three... 3D printer companies and MakerBot was one of them. The next year there were like 70, <laughs> and I didn't ask this year because like you turn away a bunch of people. There's a there's a special issue coming out really soon uh, by Make Magazine, and I, Make is the Bible right. for makers. Right. And right. it was what I subscribed to that inspired me to do this in the right. first place. Sure. Dale is great. All the people that make are well. They're fantastic. just over the hill, you know. We know them. All. I know it's yeah. great. I'm I'm there often. We I'm even talked week. to them about doing a show. I. I would like to do a maker show include, that includes 3D uh, printing, but now that we've got a printer bot, maybe we will. You know, maybe we can. Uh, they're fantastic, and uh, they really inspired me to do this. And you know, the next year there were so many printing printer companies; it was almost ridiculous. And right. the 3D printing issue that they did last year, we were on the cover along with um, Up uh, or uh, Affinia, which is kind of like a Chinese uh, company. And uh, then also, you know, MakerBot's up in the corner. So there's only a few players that sell thousands of printers, and we happen to be one of those. So you're this is an, a, a going enterprise now. This is you, you, you that you took that eight hundred thousand dollars, you created yep. a real business. You're selling them at an amazingly low price, two ninety nine for the kit, three ninety nine assembled right. for the base model. This is about a thousand dollars, which is still mm -hmm. less than half right. what a MakerBot would, replicator would right. cost. Um, so that's really that's exciting. This is an opportunity for anybody to. 
kind of play with the hobby uh, a little Yeah, bit. I really recommend you read the Ars Technical art article. It sounds like they're really hard on us, but it's pretty it's pretty real. You feel it's, it's fair. I, I really yeah. do because yeah. it was the $3,300 printer versus the $300 printer. And yeah. They both can print the same thing. <laughs> they both require maintenance. Right. Um, it's early days, but right. we really want to say, hey, it's, it's hard right now. Um, if you're an early adopter, if you're an enthusiast, you can get into this. And in reality, you can make the stuff right here. What does it take to print this, uh, this was wonderful a, tree frog? Yeah, this is a PrinterBot user. This was one of the guys that bought a PrinterBot and sent it to That's us. That's on a PrinterBot. Absolutely. Hey, if I can do that, I'm happy. <laughs> right. That is that is awesome. Yeah, we just, I don't know if you got the email, but last year, last week uh, on Sunday, I was, uh, we actually went into space with a PrinterBot Simple. The, the Have you seen the Brito Bomber guys? No. <laughs> uh, the Yelp engineers, um, they decided they want to take, uh, NASA was talking about all the 3D printing in space and everything. It's all right. this buzz. And they said, uh, we're going to we're gonna go to space first. So last week I was up here and- They uh, launched you in space? We launched in Antioch in a weather balloon for the second time. And we wanted to print in space 111,000 feet. Did it work? Yeah, we printed. Wow. Yeah. Uh, wow. It's really light. The simple is super light. It's five pounds normally, but we got it down to under four pounds for the weather balloon. But, and, and when I, when I asked him how much did all this cost, the whole weather balloon and everything with the simple printer was less than a thousand dollars. Still, oh, that's so still cool. less than half of a maker. That's bike, so. so cool. We are competing on price at the very least. It, this looks like you could actually, this gear actually uses. Yeah, that was actually one of the gears. We have an injection molded gear now, but the original Kickstarter used those gears. Oh, that's right, because you were building printer, you were bootstrapping, building yep. printer bot with printer bot. Yep, replicating. Ah, ah. Wow. Well, Brooke, I'm so excited that we have one of these. I think we'll yeah. have to just do some periodic projects. Absolutely. We're going to put uh, Burke in charge of uh, <laughs> keeping it running. And uh, buying the PLA so we don't run out. Oh, we'll we'll make sure you. No, no, I don't. I, that's fine. And if people want to know more, then go to PrinterBot. There's no e in PrinterBot.com, and uh, pick up one for an amazing price. Do you have support for schools that want to do it? Uh, yeah, absolutely. If you buy more than ten printers, we give ten percent off. I'm constantly talking to teachers and hacker spaces. We our heart is really with people that are educating others. Um, so absolutely, uh, teachers, hackerspaces, contact us. Well, I'm probably going to buy a couple for the high school that I uh, serve on great. the board of because I think that this is a smart kids who are taking engineering classes really yeah. need access to these kinds of. Tools. We donate a bunch to just to, for the future to right? robot clubs. It's and just jumpstarting the future. I mean, this yeah. is next know. week. A, a Folsom a, a kid wrote me and said. Uh, you know, we we don't have money for it, but we'd love to do it. So they're coming next week, and they're going to print, uh, build one themselves, and uh, we're going to give that away to them. So we do that kind of stuff. Um, we really believe in kids and education. That's what will change the world. Not me doing the Kickstarter in this business, but the kids and what they're going to make. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you gave a personal computer in the early days of personal computing to a kid, you could be pretty much assured that that kid would grow up writing software, making. Things change. Absolutely. A Bill Gates or a Steve Wozniak. And yep. so that's, we're, we're trying to create the new uh, Wazes of the 21st there's, century. There's a kid, Easton La Chapelle. Uh, he's a kid that started at 14 in Colorado. I wanted to tell you about. He had this, he met this girl that was a, a little, like eight, nine year old girl that was missing an arm. Mm. And he met her and talked to the parents and asked, uh, you know, how much is that? arm cost and they said well it's like ninety thousand dollars wow and we'll have to replace it twice oh. and he thought oh, with 3d printing we got to be able to do better so he actually for two years just learned arduino learned 3d printing back the kickstarter i sent him a printer and a couple years later he's met obama and he presented the arm oh my that goodness is totally hmm. all of the it degrees works. of motion yeah he actually has one of those uh, neurosky headsets that you can control it with your brain <laughs> And so he's got a 3D printed arm that's ready to put on people without an arm. And it's it literally costs, cost is like $330. Wow. So when you think about how is this going to change the world, it can totally change individuals, uh, one person at a time. Oh, my you God. Can, you can take this and make things that will really, really change people's lives. Brooke, you have. This is really exciting, Brooke Drum. Printerbot.com, we brought your site down. That's a good sign. Awesome. People go there and... Uh, <laughs> Pick up one. We now have the PrinterBot Pro, the, the high-end baby. PrinterBot Plus. Plus. 
And we're going to have to figure out, is a USB interface to the printer? Yeah, yeah, we can send you an LCD panel. You don't have to use a computer. No, we, we got a few computers around here. Yeah. We probably... You're going to have to design if you want to make your own stuff, but we you can we'll use design. it autonomously. No. Yeah, we'll design. I think right uh, I think we have we have a team of geeks here who probably right can't on. wait to get to get printing. And maybe we'll start printing parts when we need parts. We, we, we need custom uh, clips for the lavalier mics. Absolutely. We need custom clips for the lobs. That's your first assignment, John. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, this is fun. Hey, Brooke, it's really nice to meet hey, you. thank uh, you so much, Larry. You know, I know that uh, you, you emailed Patrick Norton. Yep. And he, he got one, I guess, and uh, yep. you volunteered uh, one for us. And, uh, yeah, there's Dvorak's a bunch of guys. going to be here later. You sh oh, great. You, know, you should talk to him. I got I got to tell you, I've been listening ever since you guys started, and there's like this little hero list of podcasters that I've followed for years, and I just kept, you know, up on my tech listening to you guys oh, week to week. So and literally so the, the, the moment that PrinterBot uh, came into my mind on how to design a lower cost printer was when I was listening to Twig podcast. That's great. Seriously, bro. that's really exciting. Uh, anyway, thank be here. you. I'll show them and we'll we'll print some stuff. Awesome. Uh, Printerbot.com.